thank you uh, to everyone for joining. Uh, good morning, afternoon, evening, depending on where you are located. Um, uh, I think need to open uh, with recognition that again, climate change needs to be a, a topic of conversation uh, uh, over and over and over again as we look at the horrific floods last week in uh, uh, in northern and eastern Afghanistan, some provinces with which I am very familiar uh, um, uh, hit hard, 58 Afghans dead, uh, another 300 plus injured, de devastation of property. It's just heartbreaking um, and, uh, and underscores the real uh, challenges we face uh, collectively um, on, on how to uh, uh, on how to prevent such loss in the future. Um, uh, so condone my deepest sympathies to families and villages and communities uh, racked by natural disaster. Uh, U.S. partners are working closely with the U.N. system to try and get assistance and, and support to communities who need it. Uh, but I'm here today to talk about uh, the Doha 3 uh, process. And I thought what I'd do, and I've been doing this now over the better part of 10 days, um, with various groups of activists uh, inside and outside the country to just tell them what happened and and try to give people a first person perspective uh, on the conversations and then happy to take your questions uh, wherever this leads us. Uh, but I think it's a good reminder just to 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 recall that that uh, the Doha process is linked to, UN Security Council Resolution 2721, um, the objective of which is to is to increase international engagement on Afghanistan in a coordinated and structured manner, um, so as to reintegrate Afghanistan into the international community uh, and meeting its international obligations. The objectives of the of the Doha Three meeting in this process were twofold. Um, the first was to serve as a platform for envoys and the Taliban to discuss issues of concern. And the UN structured the agenda around um, thematic issues it had identified during pre-consultations in Afghanistan about issues of concern to the Afghan people, the economy, and counter-narcotics. Um, the second purpose of the, or the second objective of the meeting was to have a discussion with civil society experts uh, on their perspectives and issues of concern. Um, and remember, this was the first time the UN and the envoys had sat in a room with the Taliban uh, to discuss Afghanistan. And the participants in the meeting, as a reminder, since this has now been a couple of weeks, um, the meeting was chaired by uh, the UN Undersecretary of the Department of Political and Peacebuilding Affairs in the UN, Rosemary DiCarlo, and uh, along with SRSG Rosa Otumbayeva. And then 25 countries sent their on Afghanistan envoys to participate. There were envoys from three uh, uh, regional organizations. There were uh, two representatives from multilateral development banks, and then there was a panel of seven uh, civil society experts, uh, plus, of course, the Taliban delegation. Um, in in its in, it, in the opening session of the Doha Three meeting was uh, structured to be um, a general conversation about the situation in Afghanistan and a discussion of the independent assessment which is uh, the report the, the report conduct, uh, put together by former Turkish Foreign Minister uh, Feridun Sinaroglu and attached to UNSCR 2721. Um, so in its opening statement, the UN lost no time, frankly, in putting women and girls at the table. And Undersecretary DiCarlo um, uh, reiterated the international community's uh, priorities in Afghanistan as support for inclusivity, the support for human rights, especially for women, and the need for effective counterterrorism. She welcomed UNSCR 2721 and the independent assessment, calling for structured and coordinated 
uh, calling for a structured and coordinated process. Undersecretary DiCarlo um, uh, welcomed and acknowledged progress in uh, the pop in in implementing the poppy van and in increasing regional trade. Uh, noting, however, there were still massive needs in the country after $11 billion in foreign assistance. Um, she was clear, however, that restrictions on education and restrictions on employment were violations of human rights. And she also laid down a marker that Afghanistan was expected to abide by its UN obligations. The Taliban uh, for their part, used their um, opening statement to reiterate longstanding demands. They opened saying they were committed to positive engagement and constructive dialogue, um, and their priorities were familiar. Remove all restrictions and sanctions, unfreeze all reserves, and do not politicize foreign assistance. Uh, they uh, summarized, as they would do several times in the course of the meeting, they summarized uh, some of their achievements, stressing in particular the poppy ban. And they pointed to their emphasis on regional connectivity uh, with, uh, with a particular emphasis on infrastructure, um, the need for railroads, the need for the CASA 1000 project, the need for the North-South corridor to be, com to be completed. Uh, the Taliban delegation did not specifically address human rights in their opening statement, um, referring to Afghanistan's cultural and religious uh, requirements being an internal matter. Envoys uh, in, their, uh, in their statements in review of the situation of Afghanistan, um, the majority upheld the independent assessment uh, and, and really put women at the center of their Afghanistan strategies. Um, envoy after envoy after envoy warned the Taliban that Afghanistan cannot be successful if it leaves half its population out. Envoys called on Afghanistan to fulfill the, uh, all the UN conventions. And at the same time, envoys called on the UN to establish a process um, and a guide to keep the work of the, of the independent assessment on track. I think it's worth noting that there was a group of envoys that had very uh, similar points and that those were the countries who share borders with Afghanistan and envoys from, from the region uh, emphasized their desire to have good relations with Afghanistan. Um, and then they, were, they expressed concern about security, about migrants, um, and they upheld the, the, the need for more infrastructure in the region things that benefit them um, as much as they benefit Afghanistan. Uh, neighbors were some of the strongest voices, however, in warning against um, Afghanistan leaving half its population out and urging inclusive governance. Now, these are also uh, envoys who were looking at um, ways to jumpstart the economy and benefit the, the region as well, and these these envoys fell uh, into the category of supporting uh, sanctions relief and asset return. In the conversation on, and so after the the, the general session, introductory session, uh, reviewing the independent assessment and uh, the situation in Afghanistan, um, there were two sessions devoted to particular issues, one on the private sector and one on counter narcotics. In the private sector, the Taliban gave a very detailed presentation on, on, how, on how they assessed the state of the economy, um, noting that regional trade had increased and corruption and bureaucracy had decreased. Um, they argued that economic independence for Afghanistan would only come if sanctions were lifted and that if development assistance was provided uh, without restrictions. They called for the uh, international community to do more on banking, uh, to fix the banking system, to issue visas to Afghan private sector companies looking to do business abroad, uh, and to finish unfinished infrastructure. Envoys in response almost uniformly said, agreed that the private sector could be a catalyst for Afghanistan's economy 
and that the Doha process could help the private sector help solve problems. Um, but again and again, uh, envoys warned the Taliban that Afghanistan's economy would not improve if Afghan women continue to be denied the right to work and the right to an education. They also pointed out that the lack of a regulatory framework was a problem for Afghanistan's economy. Um, the lack of transparency around public spending was a problem for Afghanistan's economy. The lack of inclusivity was a problem for the economy. That it wasn't simply um, so easy as just lifting sanctions. Uh, a functioning central bank needed to meet international standards. And Afghanistan had several problems in the economic space to fix. The counter narcotics, uh, in the counter narcotics session, the Taliban gave a very detailed presentation here on uh, everything they had done to eliminate the cultivation of poppy, um, interfere with the interdiction or interdict drugs and drug trafficking, uh, treat addiction, uh, and um, prepare alternative livelihoods. Um, the Taliban made, I think, an urgent plea that alternative livelihoods in particular um, needed to begin without delay or farmers would be forced to, to grow poppy again. They urged envoys not to impose further demands on the counter narcotics uh, effort. Um, they asked to be allowed to go to international meetings um, and, they, and they asked for help from the region uh, on the specific issue of synthetic narcotics. Envoys in response uh, acknowledged much of the work that had been done uh, in the counter narcotics campaign, but urged the Taliban to see, uh, to put women at the center of more of their approaches, particularly when it comes to the treatment of addiction and the, and, the, and the provision of alternative livelihoods, noting that women are responsible for families and therefore need to be both uh, treat, treated for addiction or be able to care for people, uh, uh, either recovering addicts or, or the still addicted. And then women have long served as the backbone of agriculture in Afghanistan and would be central to successful alternative livelihoods. Envoys also made a, a plea in this in this session for the Taliban to, to open up to working with civil society organizations and that there was a lot of expertise uh, in civil society organizations, particularly when it comes to uh, addiction and treatment and livelihoods. Um, moving to the civil society panel, after the conclusion of the Taliban discussions, the civil society participants, I think, made a very strong statement at the opening that they were there to represent themselves, not all of civil society. They hadn't been elected or appointed or chosen or nominated uh, to represent Afghanistan civil society. They were themselves experts and wanted to be treated as experts in their particular fields. And, and that was a point that led into the discussion about the need to do more consultations with civil society actors inside and outside Afghanistan and that, and that civil society itself must be better connected inside and outside Afghanistan. The, the panelists all agreed, and these were panelists from inside and outside Afghanistan, uh, agreed that they needed to dial down the controversy uh, about uh, surrounding some civil society organizations um, and that they needed to find ways to work together, uh, identifying and setting realistic goals uh, that can work on solutions for the Afghan people. Um, in response to, the, to their remarks, envoys um, provided strong support for the independent assessment framework and the need for a diversity of views, uh, including those of civil society inside and outside the country. Envoy said, stability without inclusion is not long-term sustainable. And Bridges and uh, uh, Envoys welcomed uh, statements by civil society participants to build bridges inside and outside the country. 
Several envoys mentioned the important role that Richard Bennett plays uh, and the need for um, uh, the need for there to be engagement among Afghans and with Afghans, which was important not only to good policy and process, but important in briefing parliaments uh, about the Afghanistan effort. So a couple of takeaways, um, I will say, as a result of three days of intensive uh, um, conversations among and between the UN envoys and uh, and Afghans. Um, I think that with the Taliban, uh, even though Afghan women were not physically present in the room, uh, they were definitely at the table. And, and listening to 20 plus envoys um, emphasize the rights of the, the human rights of all Afghans, but particularly the need for Afghanistan to get women uh, back to work and girls back in school was powerful. Um, I think also uh, it was interesting, it was very interesting to hear the Taliban delegation say that Afghanistan is the way Afghans want it to be, that Afghans want Afghanistan to be the way it is today. Uh, I think that's a narrative only Afghans can change, frankly. Um, with civil society, uh, clear, immediate takeaway that we need more dialogue, we need more transparency. Uh, uh, that even though this was not built, this forum uh, was not built to be an intra-Afghan dialogue, doesn't take the requirement um, out of the equation uh, to be transparent with, uh, with Afghan experts. Um, the UN has proposed a step-for-step -step approach uh, and a continuation of this process um, organized around the thematic discussions as a starting point, but, a, but looking at all of the topics covered in the independent assessment. The Taliban pressed for pragmatic results. Um, everyone agreed on the need for, or at least envoys agreed on the need for uh, more dialogue with civil society. And, and I think a real uh, understanding that we have to get to work on specific things. 